Welcome back, Pickens Chemistry students. This short video is going to cover nuclide terms and some vocabulary. So the first thing is, what is a nuclide? A nuclide is any combination of protons and neutrons that forms a nucleus. So you could imagine taking any combination of protons and neutrons and putting those together and forming a nucleus, in other words, the center of an atom. In the case of nuclides, we are not concerned with the electrons. We don't worry about how many electrons are there or not there. If we're looking and talking about nuclides, then a lot, in a lot of cases, we're talking about nuclear reactions where the electrons wouldn't really be around those nuclei anyway, because the nuclei would have so much energy, they would be moving so fast that no electrons would be able to stay with the nucleus. So a nuclide is any combination of protons and neutrons that forms a nucleus. And so in a lot of ways, we will use, still use atomic symbols when we talk about these nuclides, but we're not going to be as worried about what the charge is. We're really gonna be focused more on how many protons something has and how many neutrons something has, okay? Um, within nuclides, there's many different ways that we can combine these protons and neutrons. And so one of the big ways we can combine them or talk about them is we can talk within nuclides, we can talk about isotopes. And if you break that word down and you think about what it means, we see the prefix iso, which means same, okay? And so what's the same here? Well, isotopes has a P in the name. And so P, you should be thinking protons. So isotopes have the same protons. If they have the same number of protons, what's determined by the number of protons in an atom? Well, the atomic number is determined by the number of protons. And that also ends up determining the element. So if you change the number of protons, then you change the element. But if you have the same number of protons, then you really have the same element. But something here is gonna be different. The difference is gonna be the neutrons. And if you have the same number of protons, but you have different neutrons, then that means you're going to have different mass numbers. So in the prior video, atomic symbols, were there any atomic symbols for nuclides that had the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons? And you should be saying, yeah, there were these hydrogen ones, okay? So hydrogen one, hydrogen two, hydrogen three, these are all isotopes of hydrogen. That's how we would use the term. They're nuclides, but because they're all nuclides of the same element with different mass numbers, with different numbers of neutrons, they are more specifically called isotopes. You can only have isotopes of the same element, okay? So you could have isotopes of iron, you could have isotopes of fluorine, but you would never have isotopes of hydrogen and fluorine combined. We would call those nuclides if we're comparing them rather than just calling them isotopes, okay? And so these three isotopes in particular have very special names. So the hydrogen one, it doesn't have any neutrons. It's just a proton. So the special name for this isotope is called protium. Proteum, okay? These three isotopes, these are the only isotopes with special names, otherwise, you would name the isotope with the element, a dash, and the mass number, okay? So protium is this hydrogen one. It's just a proton in the nucleus. The other two, hydrogen two and hydrogen three, you may have heard the isotope names for at some point, and the isotope names really come from the fact that the mass is two and the mass is three. More specifically, the mass number is two and the mass number is three. So two and three 
What are some prefixes you know that mean two and three? You might say die or buy. Hopefully you definitely said try for three, okay? And the prefix here for hydrogen two is actually gonna be more related to French than to Latin or Greek necessarily. And the prefix that we would use here would be dut. And deuterium is the special name for hydrogen two. This is the isotope of hydrogen in something called heavy water. And hydrogen three, the special name would be tritium. And tritium is in fact um, separated out down at the Savannah River site as a part of their uh, national defense mission. And so that is relatively local for South Carolina at least. So these are the only three isotopes that have special names. Hydrogen one is protium, hydrogen two is deuterium, hydrogen three is tritium. Remember the name is related back to the mass number for these special cases, except for the protium where it's just one. Besides isotopes, we also have isotones. So if isotopes had the same numbers of protons, what do you think isotones have the same number of? Because it's got an N in the name, hopefully you said same neutrons, which means they're going to be different elements. But there must be something, yeah, same neutrons, different elements, different masses, different masses. So they're all gonna have the same number of neutrons, different masses, because they have different protons, different protons. So what are some examples then of isotones? Well, again, we can come back to nuclides. We can take almost any combination, but let's for now, let's just go ahead and say that they have um, 10 neutrons each, 10 neutrons each. So for such a small number of neutrons, a reasonable number of protons for atoms that might actually exist would be close to this. So their Zs, their atomic numbers, could be nine, 10, or 11. So let's look at those elements, okay? So nine, 10, 11 for atomic number, nine, 10, 11, Nine would be fluorine, 10 is neon, and 11 is sodium. So fluorine, nine, neon, 10, sodium, 11. Those are the atomic numbers. If they have 10 neutrons each, then what would their mass numbers be? Well, all you'd have to do is add 10 neutrons to the atomic number, and you'd see that this would be fluorine, 19, neon 20, and sodium 21. Those are reasonable mass numbers for these nuclides, okay? And all of these nuclides, because they all have 10 neutrons each, they are all examples of isotones, okay? One more that we'll see, and this will be more easy to see when we're in class and I show you a big poster are called isobars. Bars might make you think of barometric pressure, barometers. And when you think about pressure, you should maybe be thinking about weight. And so really isobars are the same mass numbers, same mass numbers, but to maintain the same mass number, this means P and N will change. But no matter how they change, P plus N will have to equal the mass number. In other words, some constant that depends on your particular isobar, okay? Um, one of the famous isobars to look at would be a mass number of 40. And so as long as the mass number is 40, you could have any set of elements here. Um, this is still kind of small, so if we go for half of 40 and we say that we have equal numbers of protons and neutrons, 
then we might have an atomic number of 20. An atomic number of 20, if we look on the periodic table, would be calcium. And so here we have calcium. Now we could change this atomic number and we could make it whatever we want. And we don't have to just change it by one. So let's go ahead and say it's 18 and 22. These atoms, these nuclides, whatever they are, 18 and 22, as long as they still have mass numbers of 40, they would still be in the same isobar as calcium 40. So 18 would be argon and 22 would be titanium. So argon and titanium, these are all isobars, okay? And the final example is an isomer, 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 and this still has iso, so we've still got same in our name. Mer, if you think back to biology, you might recall learning about polymers and monomers. Monomers would be single units, polymers would be many units, carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, lipids, those are all polymers. So those are many units in a polymer, so an isomer would be the same unit. So really what this is, is it's the same protons and neutrons, same protons and neutrons, same mass number. So what's going to be different here is a little bit trickier to think about. And what's going to be different here is the arrangement. In other words, a different energy within the system. So as an example of isomers, I always like to think about a glass of ice. And if you have ice that you put into a glass, let's say you've got a glass of ice and you fill that ice so it's coming up over the rim of the glass. You can then shake that glass a little bit and the ice can settle down in, right? Not necessarily from breaking into chips or anything like that, just those ice cubes pack in a little bit tighter a little bit closer together. And when we think about these protons and neutrons coming closer together and packing a little bit tighter, that's gonna be a lower energy. So when the protons and neutrons are spread out a little bit more, when they're arranged in a different way, that's going to be a higher energy. And so we don't see this in terms of changing any of these numbers, atomic numbers or mass numbers with the symbols. What we see here is we see for higher energy, we see a symbol on the atomic symbol, oops, that's too far over, of this M, M. So a great example of this would be technetium 99M, okay, higher energy, whereas technetium 99 with no M, no M would be lowest energy. Low, let me rewrite that, lowest energy. The other way you could show this sometimes would be with an asterisk. So you could say technetium 99, and you could put an asterisk here, and that asterisk would represent a higher energy state. In this case, it's in the same spot where charge would go. But again, with nuclides, we're not worried about charges. So you want to think about all these terms. You want to think about how we can apply these to atomic symbols. Because if we're looking at atomic symbols and we don't worry about the electrons, then we're really also talking about a nuclide. Okay.